Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be making a video talking about backend API validation using Yup inside of Express and it's going to be really cool. Basically, um, for the past couple of months I've been working on a startup and that's where I actually learned how important validation uh, like both in the front end and the back end is. So I've made videos on front end validation using React but today I'm going to be talking about how to validate your inputs that are coming from your API call. So why do we do it on both ways? Well, because there are ways to bypass the front end validation and you wanna make sure that you're not inserting any like crazy thing uh, inside, of your, inside of your database or inside of your application, right? This can help in various different situations and it is the most secure way of uh, working through a backend application. And before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe because I'm posting almost every day. I post every day normally, but since it's Christmas and like the end of the year, it's been crazy. And also I have an interview, so I'm studying like crazy for that. So if you guys uh, could subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So let's get into the video. You can see right here that I have a very, very simple API. Uh, like literally super simple. The only thing it does is it, it calls, it creates the express variable, then it, it creates an app from it. I validate JSON, uh, like so that we can receive JSON objects. And if you're having troubles with that, um, don't forget to validate this, to, to write this right here. Then I create a simple post request to a slash user. And inside of it, the only thing we do, we do is we just return the, what, like the object that we, that we receive. And basically the example I'm gonna give to you guys is imagine, imagine this post request right here is a post request to create a user. So what we pass in the body is the actual user information and it will contain a first name, a last name, an email and a password. So we want to validate those pieces of information. And you can see right here, I have, I'm using Insomnia and you could, you could use Postman, you can use whatever you want, but basically what Insomnia does is, it's just a great way to test your API routes. So like normally I would have to create a front end to make a post request and test it, right? So in this case, we don't, we just, we just test it here in Insomnia. We can just send a post request to our local host slash user and that's great. So you can see right now that this is what I'm sending. This is uh, my user it has a first name of Pedro, a last name of Machado, which is my last name, then an email and then a password, right? And when I send, when I send it, you can see the response is just the, the user back. It has a status of 200, meaning it was okay and great. But there's an issue with this. Imagine if I sent this right here. This doesn't look like an email, right? This doesn't look like an email. If I send this, it still works currently, right? But we don't want it to work. More importantly, imagine if I don't send anything at all. Like I, I leave some stuff empty and I try to send it. The way we currently do is nothing happens. Like we, we are able to send those pieces of information. So we're gonna validate everything and it's gonna be really nice because with the library called Yup, you can do it. You can do so many things with it. You don't. You don't need to know rejects. You don't need to know any of that. It's gonna be a lot more simpler. For example, we can even set it so that the password has to be between four and ten characters. For example, instead of right now, which we can put whatever we want. So let's start working on it. And the first thing you'll need is also like currently I have Express installed. But the first thing you'll need is actually to install Yup which is the name of the library. So to install Yup, you need to come over here and say yarn add Yup. Or if you're using NPM, you can just say NPM install Yup. But Yup is a really nice library and we're gonna be using it. So the libraries I have here is Yup and Express. Yeah, those are the only ones. So what do we have to do now? Well, what we're actually gonna do, and this is what most people do when they're trying to validate in their backend, is they create a middleware. And what do I mean by a middleware is if you've never worked with middlewares before, I can make a video on that. Basically what a middleware does is, is a, a function that runs before uh, an API, like when you run an API request, before we actually get to this point right here where we do something with the data we receive, we can set a middleware right before it, where it's kind of like a function which does some background work uh, before going further, right? So what is the background work we wanna do is basically we wanna, over here we wanna validate the, if the if what we received is correct. Obviously this doesn't work right now and validate isn't even a, a word, but uh, like we wanna put something over here that is going to do that work. So we're gonna create that middleware. So to create a middleware, we're actually gonna create a folder over here called middlewares. And I always like to have a folder called middlewares in my applications because middlewares are really awesome and you can use them in several different situations. 
but the idea here is that we're going to create one called validation middleware. So let me call it validation middleware dot js. And, and actually, I believe that before we actually write our validation middleware, it's better that we actually work with the up first. So you guys have an I like start understanding how the middleware works. So let's create a folder called validations. And this will be the folder where we determine all of our validations. And uh, yup is really simple to understand, you'll see uh, how it like how simple it is. But the thing is that you usually want to have several different validations. So a validation for a user, uh, or like a validation for, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, depending on your on your application, right? Uh, all the different types of uh, pieces of information that you might receive. So you want to validate all of them. So we're going to create here a, fi a file called user validation, which is just going to store the validation for the user. And this file will very simply just do one thing, it's going to create the user schema. So the schema when I say schema is basically like the structure of the user, right? We need to say that it, it needs to include a user, a first name, a last name, an email and a password that what that's what the schema means, right? So we're gonna set it equal to something. And right at the bottom, we're gonna module that exports the user schema. So that's, that's the idea of the user validation. And we're gonna do this for every other validation that we want to have. And it's, it's gonna be exactly the same. So what we have to do here at the top is we need to import yup, because we're gonna be using yup in this file. And this is the only file we're actually going to be using yup. So const yup uh, requir equals require yup. And with yup to create a schema and say like, oh, these are the things that we need each property to have, right? To do that, you can very simply just come here and say yup dot object. And you can pass an object inside of here. And this object will be actually the structure of your schema. So for example, we want a first name, we want a last name, we want an email, and we want a password, right? We want all four of those. But now for each of them, we have to decide what they look like. So a first name this is looks like a, a string. So we have to say that we only accept strings. And uh, do we want to do anything with the first name? I don't think so. I only th I only want it to be a, a string. And also I want it to be required. So this is kind of like part of the documentation for Yup. you can look uh, there are like 1000 different things you can do with uh, to validate something, but string and required are kind of like the ones we're going to use the most because like everything we put here are strings and we, we want to require all of them, right? Last name will be exactly the same, we want it to be a string and we want it to be required. Then email, here comes the part where I think Yup is really nice, you don't need to use any rejects to determine if this is an email or not. You can just use the yup. Um, first of all, we're gonna say it's a string, right? And then we want to we can, you can just say I want it to be an email and they have already a property that checks for that. And finally, we want it to be required. And then for password, here comes another thing that is really awesome with yup, you can set it equal to a string, we, we want it to be a string, and we want it to be required, right? But let's imagine I want our password to be at least four characters and at maximum 10 characters, we can say min four and max 10. And then just put them together. This are just kind of, this is kind of like a chain of events chain of things we want. But the standard is that first you you say what like the type the data type. And at the end you say required. So we want to require all of them. And in between of those you put like all the specific things like this is an email or this is minimum four characters and maximum four, 10 characters. You can do how many like it's it, yep is awesome in my opinion. So you can do a lot of things with it. And one thing that is also cool is and I'll show you later is you're able to put some like specific error messages that we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys later. But you can do that really nicely with yup. So now that we have our schema here, we have to find a way to validate that schema. And what do I mean by validate is with yup, you can do something like this, you can say user schema dot validate. And you can pass here an object containing first name, last name, email, password, and it kind of checks to see uh, if the object satisfies the schema. So that's the idea. If it does, it, it, it worked. If it doesn't, it means that we're, we we don't like we didn't validate. So we have to create our middleware so that it will check to see if it validates. And if it doesn't, then we, we, we just want to send an error message 
and we don't want to allow the post request to be done. We just want to send the error message. But if it is, we just want to continue moving forward, right? Because the validate middleware will come before all of these things over here. We'll make the post request, we'll validate, and then we'll go here and see whatever, like what else we want to do. So nothing inside of here will be related to validation. Our validation will occur in our validation middleware. So to do this, what we're going to do is basically we're going to come over here and we're going to create a variable called validation. Um, let's call it, I'll just call it validation, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, it's going to be a function. And at the bottom, similar to what we did with the uh, user validation, we're going to module dot exports equals to validation, we're going to just export this to wherever we want to import this in our application. So this over here is going to be a function, since it's a middleware. And this function over here, it's very simple, it's an asynchronous function. So we're going to say here async. And basically, it's going to take two things. So the first part of the function, we're going to take this schema, right? So this schema, basically, our idea is, I can't even write schema. We're going to pass, we're going to call this function validation, and we're going to pass this schema right here, we're going to pass this right here into that. So that when I, like we can just change, we can call this validation middleware, and validate different schemas that we create. So we don't even we don't need to create a validation just for the user validation, we can create this middleware, and whichever other validation schemas we want to pass, we can just pass to the function. And then we're going to make this asynchronous. And we want to have a rack. As for middle words, we usually have a, a, a rack, a res and next and next just to keep moving forward, right. And um, we finish our function here. And instead of here, we have to do all the different stuff that we want to do to validate our, our schema. The first thing I want to do is I want to catch the the buddy that we pass. So here in insomnia, I'm sending this JSON right here, right. So in this rack, we have access to that buddy. So if I want to create here, um, const um, body equals to rec the buddy, I can access that buddy but through rec the buddy and I just created a variable called buddy, um, which represents the object that we sent through the request. So now that we have the, the, the user that we sent through the request, we can try to validate it. So we're going to pass a try catch over here. And this is the cool part. Um, if it doesn't work, so if it doesn't work, it's gonna have an error. And it knows it knows it has an error. And the only thing we want to do with this error is we want to return uh, res dot status. So if, if you're not used to status, I, I did this wrong, I have to, to do it like this, and I have to put this right here. But if you've never worked with status before, um, I can make a video on this. But basically, 200 is good, 400 is bad. <laughs> it's not exactly that. But like, uh, that's basically that that's the basic idea. So we're gonna say that if there's an error, we want to send the status 400. And we want to send a JSON containing the error, just like so that we can see exactly what error happened. But if there isn't any errors, um, we want to just await. And we want to validate the schema. So what do I mean by validate the schema, I want to say schema, which is the the schema we're passing, which is user schema, dot validate. And we're going to pass the buddy here. So basically, what we we're doing is with the middleware. And again, this isn't a tutorial for how to make middlewares. But uh, the idea with the middleware is we're going to try something. And if we successfully did something like inside of the middleware, when we successfully finished doing whatever we want, we want to pass the next function, which basically says, okay, end this middleware right now and go further with because we, we did like this is this is awesome. This works, right? So we're going to wait for the schema to validate. And if it validates, then it's going to go next. If it doesn't validate, then it's going to automatically come over here and go to the catch and pass any errors. And the errors that we're going to see Yup already causes like Yup already has a bunch of errors inside of it. So for example, if you if you don't pass a string, it's gonna say um, a password has to be a string. Or if you don't pass an email, it's gonna say a, a email has to be an email, right? Or invalid email, that kind of stuff. So um, we're gonna return that automatically to our function. And we're not even going to go over here to this part, we're just gonna finish it right there. So now that we have that done, we can save this. And actually, I'll just Honestly, I'll just say we need to also return this at the end, let me just say return next, um, just so that we don't go further with this, we're, we want to finish it. And now that we have both of them done, we can import both of those things in our 
uh, index.js. So I'm going to import, first of all, validation, which is the middleware, equals to require um, dot slash middleware slash validation middleware. And then I also want to re uh, uh, require the user validation. So let me call let me call this user schema equals to require dot slash validations slash user validation and now I have access to the schema and ever the, the only like the only thing we have to do now to validate is for every post request that we are doing something with the user we will go we want to come over here and say validation which is the middleware and we want to pass the schema so here it knows that it will go first to this val this middleware and then it's going to move forward so like you'll see what happens so now let's come over here and let's try putting something crazy like um yeah like this right now you, you remember that this passed right now let's try again you see that now it gives us a, an error so for example it says um password must be must be at least at, at most 10 characters and we put a password that goes super like above it doesn't give us an error for each of those because it stops at the first error. This is something we did there. But basically, um, we, we can keep moving forward, right? If I put a correct password, this is the correct amount of pass uh, of like characters in a password. You'll see that now we will say email is a required field. So now let's put an email, right? This isn't this isn't an email, but let's see what happens. It says email must be valid. So let's put a valid email. Pedro at gmail.com. Let's send this. Now it says last name must be val must be is a required field. So let's put a last name. And now it seems like we passed the correct like it seems like this is good, right? So let's send and you see that it works. It gives us a status of 200 meaning it passed our validation middleware. So that's the basic idea, right? And it's really awesome. Uh, I, I, I actually like validating in the back end a lot more than in the front end. But also a final thing that I, I told you guys that I would show is how to pass custom errors. Like, for example, if the email is invalid, I want to say something like, uh, I don't know, yo, subscribe. <laughs> I know this isn't a good example, but let's say yo, subscribe. And let's see if this works, right? Let's put an invalid email right here. I'll just put something crazy like this. And if I send this, you'll see that it says the error message is yo subscribe because we passed that error message. You can pass a, an error message for anything. Like if I want to pass an error message for the min, I can put a comma and say, please make this bigger. And if I come over here to my insomnia and I put my password to be like one character long, you'll see it will say, please make this bigger. There's a thousand things you can do with Yup. I recommend uh, like like uh, look reading through the documentation. It is really awesome. I really enjoy this library, but that's basically it. This is how you validate stuff in your backend using Express, Node.js, and Yup. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment down below what you want to see next. I'm not posting, like I'm posting pretty regularly every day, but for this past like three days, I haven't posted, uh, I only posted once, but it's because of the, the holidays. I'm also studying a lot. So uh, I will definitely continue posting more uh, when this is over, which is in like a week or something. But yeah, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe because I'm posting almost every day and I see you guys next time.